Persistence, dear ones, persistence. Persistence is what drives us forward. Persistence in all things. Even when things are not going right or when things are going wrong, persistence. The Canaanite woman that we hear of in the Scriptures today, persistence. She prayed and was persistent. Even when she was sharply rebuked by the Lord, even when she was sharply rebuked, and, and compared to even dogs, isn't this a, a, a harsh thing to say? To see, as Christ says, in a very harsh way, for, for it is not good to give the, the bread, the children, to the dogs. But yet great was the woman's faith, for she had given up all of her self-pride, self for she realized humility, humbleness, contriteness. And she said, Yea, but even the dogs feed from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And this Jesus replied, Great is thy faith, great is thy faith. Let it be done to you as you shall will. And at that very hour, her daughter was healed. I tell you, dear ones, that she was not the only one healed that day. The daughter was not the only one healed. For we hear of this great thing. And, and as it was said in the earlier uh, gospel reading, a great light has, shined for, has shone forth. Healing of the daughter was only part of it. The healing of our souls and our bodies and our minds. Minds. You know, what are the things that separate us from God? The Canaanite woman was separated by her culture and her society. She was separated because of her people and who they were. Jesus said that he had come to save the chosen of Israel. And her example bore forth the fruit of being grafted into the family, the children of Israel. You see, Christ's salvation came to the whole world. And we are now sons and daughters. And you see, the Canaanite woman, even though the things that separated her from the Lord, her faith was great, her faith was wonderful, her faith was fulfilled. And the neat thing about that is, dear ones, is that even today, it bears a lesson to us. When, when a person comes in, in from, the, from the outside world into the church, into the doors of the church, and they come into this, this sacred place, do you hear the echoes of the prayers that have been sung here? You can feel that there is sanctity in this place. But you realize that without you and without the prayers of the faithful, there is no sanctification of this place. Because it's your prayers that go forward. It's your prayers that lift up through this, these ceiling rafters into the heavens. And you see, even when things tear you down throughout the week, and the sins that you commit pile up until you lay them at that cross, that just like a, it's like you're taking a big burlap sack of, of heavy stones, and you're laying at the foot of the cross at that table, and you're putting it down... Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Here I am. And we go to the Lord in confession. We confess our sins. And all is made right. There's repentance. You see, in doing that act, we do as the Canaanite woman did. We give away that pride. We give away that, that sense of, uh, of self-importance. The... the, the the Pharisee in the temple that was praying made a big show of hands and big show of, Lord, thank God I am not like that publican over there. And they make their prayers loud and they give their offerings in very public ways just to be seen doing these things. But yet the publican, the lowest of the low, 
the publicans in the corner of the temple, beating his breast, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. This is the humility that the Canaanite woman exhibited. And she brought it to the Christ. And she realized who he was. And she said, heal my daughter, please. And even after the Lord rebuked her, she persisted. She was persistent. She was persistent in her prayer. Even when the disciples said, send her away, Lord, for she's, she, she bothers us. She comes after us and she calls us for us. But even then, the Lord was good and might save. And so, dear ones, when you're confronted with that thing, that, that, you're, that, that evil that you can't seem to get rid of, you know, that habitual sin that seems to keep bothering you, that demon that seems to possess you, throughout your life that makes you do these things that separate you from God. Remember the Canaanite woman, the humility. Lay aside your pride. Lay aside that, that sense of self-importance. Come to the Lord. Bear it all. Lay your sins at the foot of the cross. They are never to be picked up again. This is repentance. This is turning away from that sin. This is as the Canaanite woman went beyond what she was supposed to have done. And she came to the Lord. And her daughter was healed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.